Good evening, everybody. Hello. Hi. What's up? Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're just very happy to, to meet each other, and I think we've, we've been watching each other's movies, and uh, and uh, and it's been uh, such a good day today. So, sorry, just enjoying the fact that we are being together, and uh, yeah, in this room, and it's in this theater, and uh, that's good to see the movie. I don't know for you, but it's been the it's the first time that I see my, my movie, our movie, in a, in a real uh, cinema, so that's, you know. <laughs> I'm already speaking, so I'll just keep doing that. Um, uh, my name is Simone Lagrand. Um, I'm a poet, uh, writer, storyteller, uh, also visual artist, and uh, randomly filmmaker. <laughs> and um, and yeah, I'm, I think uh, more than that, I'm from Martinique, which is for me, um, <laughs> Uh, a better definition because it implies uh, that, I am, that I'm from the Caribbean, the six continents, as I call it and we call it. Uh, but I am um, also from a, a post-colonial background uh, because Martinique, as you know, is a, is a French department that is still under the spell of, uh, of the French uh, government too. And um, for me, saying that I am from Martinique uh, says a lot also about um, how uh, I address intimacy in my work, how I address language, uh, history, um, history whether it's personal or the bigger history. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you for having me. Hi, my name is Claire Laura. I'm a visual artist, filmmaker in learning. It was our first co-creation, Demaye. And uh, from Martinique, I live there. And thank you for having us. It's such an honor to be here together. And uh, yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Vashni Karin and I created You Can't Stop Spirit. Um, I'm a New York native. Uh, didn't, <laughs> I grew up in upstate though, so you know. But my mom made sure that I have my Harlem flavor. My family's from Harlem, so it feels like a homecoming being here and screening here. Um, my great grandmother uh, passed away two years ago during the pandemic and she would rave about the Schomburg. And so this really feels like a special moment for me and especially to be here with you all. And yeah, <laughs> great to meet you. Um, hi everyone, my name is, um, uh, my name is Jessica Bashir. I'm the director of uh, Hairat, the last, I think it was the last one, right? The, the, the last film that you saw. And um, I really would love to thank the New Negress Film Society for creating this space for us to be able to share our work and for bringing us together. It's, um, it's not only just an honor, but it's just so beautiful for me to be able to have the sisterhood amongst each other and to be able to share our work you know, uh, with you. So um, thank you so much, um, everyone. And, um, and um, we met yesterday, so this is just so, um, yeah, I'm very happy to, to be here. Thank you. Uh, 
I kind of have a question or like kind of like a starting point for you guys. Um, I see in all of our works and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like all of the protagonists have this safe space or this space that they've created for themselves. And I'm curious how um, you guys went about that in your work, like why, what led you to create that space or show that space on the screen? Mm. Okay, so, um, you know, for me, I, uh, this is one of the first things that I started shooting when, when I um, decided I wanted to make a film. It was supposed to be, what you saw was supposed to be part of a feature that I have. But, um, so, it, it, to me, I, I am Mexican Ethiopian. I grew up in Ethiopia. And um, this place that, that you saw, is something that um, has stayed with me. It, it, it's part of a big part of my memory. And um, Abu Yusuf, the man that you saw, is someone that I grew up with. You know, as children, we 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 grew up. I mean, this is we didn't have. I mean, this is pre-TV or radio or anything in, in Ethiopia. And so our parents would take us there and we'd spend time and we would just watch. And whatever it is we were thinking about it, I don't remember, but I just know that this stayed with me so much. And when I first started thinking about, um, you know, perhaps, you know, uh, to, to, to direct something, to make a film or to um, even create images, it, it is these images that were invading my mind regardless that that were always so present and this one of the um, first things that I went to shoot and when I wanted to shoot this I all I was thinking is I was thinking a lot about that um, road that people call the less traveled or whatever but but that road that um, that calls you and that you sometimes you heed the call and this man, for example, he has been doing this, um, feeding his hyenas and spending time in the middle of the night for about 35 years. And so, you know, I, it always made me feel um, what it would be, or what was it at the beginning that it just, someone should just get up and say, I'm going to go in the middle of the forest and I'm going to sit there and wait for hyenas. You know, that really made me think a lot about, especially since I was um, starting to, to, to kind of try to figure out how am I gonna create anything. I, 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 I'm not coming from film school, I'm not coming from industry, I don't know anyone, or you know? It's so, so to me, um, he, he was really a, a, a huge inspiration because I thought, look, Abba Yusuf, God knows what, his mind was telling him he just was getting up and going to the forest and sitting there and feeding hyenas and he could be eaten you know and it's for me it just represented a lot about facing your fears and facing your call because that could the other side of it is love you know the thing that you love the thing that you're looking for so so yeah that's um, um so basically yeah, i just um, got myself a little camera and I started to 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 go there and teach myself as much as I could and and shot this um, that's beautiful thank you so to me that's kind of the safe space that you were thinking of and also in terms of thinking of a safe space for me um, it, it felt that I needed to create that place where I could learn, where I could grow, without necessarily having any, um, you know? And for, it was a search, and continues to be for me, you know, making a film is a search, a search for language, search for, you know, um, meaning, search for form, search, um, you know, for, for the image. So I guess th that's, that was my safe space. Totally. Um, I think um, coming from um, a colonial um, context, um, 
made me always think that uh, we speak a lot about politics or um, activism in Martinique, uh, but the question of uh, pleasure and love is not um, always addressed or even never, uh, even joy. Um, so uh, um, I grew up with a, a mother very strict. Uh, we will never speak about um, love or sexuality. And uh, I think uh, from my childhood, I've always uh, had questions, but nobody to answer to the question. I've always had also issues about, you know, uh, how we address uh, sexuality. In Martinique, we speak a lot about sex, but it's very strange because the, the, the conversation seems very silent for me. I don't know how if you can uh, relate to what I'm saying. Like, we speak a lot in carnival, for example. We speak a lot about sex, uh, uh, harassment in the street, or things like that. But when we want to speak about bonding and intimacy, nothing. And especially in Creole, because it's also the idea of, the, of this, spe this, this safe space this movie I wanted to, to, to make was about intimacy, but also the language and claiming what is yours, you know? So I wanted to make something in between, you know, like talking Creole. So the film uh, starts with the French and then it ends with Creole because Creole is taking over. Um, so yeah, basically this film was made uh, for um, an exhibition uh, it was just a commission, and I was like, I've always wanted to, you know, to 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 dig deeper into images, and um, and uh, I've I've done a film before, uh, but uh, when I've been commissioned for that uh, exhibition, I thought, okay, I need someone. Uh, we were talking about uh, getting help when you want to do something and you want to dig deeper, so I instantaneously think about Claire Laura because she is um, a part of a, the, the, the family. I, cho I, I, cho I have chosen in Martinique to make things together. So I was like, okay, I know her images, I know she draws, she takes photographies, and um, she also shoot uh, films. Uh, but I know also that um, she, she doesn't really think herself as a filmmaker, so let's do that together and let's direct that. Uh, so yeah, that was also this. The, the there are three spa safe spaces: a language, the intimacy, and also the connection. I don't know if I can say that, but I want to say that. So. Um, I I just want to add that the for me the safe place already exists within us, and I wanted to like restore it, create, um, um, like, how can I say that? Recreate it in a visual sound form, uh, like a prayer for ourselves, in ourselves. It's like an internal garden, and it was made in my garden. We were three women in a really safe, beautiful place, and uh, it was all like connecting with ourselves and yeah for me it was really how can I recreate that visually the all all the things happen within us when it was broken how we can restore that and yeah for me the safe place was uh, really about that Yeah, for me, um, so I got introduced to this cultural practice while I was at Xavier University in New Orleans, and um, it came out of a, a class. Um, I got introduced to it through the dean of my university, and while everybody went to go graduate, I graduated as well, but I stayed with them, and I, I filmed them for about six years. So this, this is my first work figuring it out, you know, figuring out my language, how I, I didn't go to film school, I went to school for journalism, but it really allowed me to play, it really allowed me to figure out um, my inner voice, and even more, 
Um, I think thematically, the film is so much about freedom and, and women having a space where they can be whoever they want to be. And I think, and I didn't know this, but I was looking for, for that part of me as well, that, that confidence, that courage, that bravery to be whoever I wanted to be in the world. You know, we, we all wear masks, we go out in the world and we have these different personas um, at work or with your children or with whomever. But um, the persona that they take on when they put on um, their attire, that's to them their real self, right? So I was so interested in, in who that self was. And um, later on, after the film came out, one of the dolls that I got really close with actually invited me to mask with her. And um, it's, it's a very sacred practice. Like not everybody gets to mask um, in New Orleans or be a part of the baby dolls or the masking Indians. So I took it really seriously, but it just added another layer to the experience because now it's like a whole anthropo anthropological ethnographic thing and I'm like writing about it. But um, yeah, it's, it, it's been a very special adventure. <laughs> Um, I have a question um, because um, I have the feeling that um, curating that uh, that moment between the four of us, um, there was um, something connecting us also uh, about um, the um, I don't know uh, if I can say that the hypnotic power of poetry. Um, so uh, I wanted to 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 ask you about uh, the use of poetry um, in the, I, I, I think it's poetry, I mean, for me it's poetry anyway, I, I think I see poetry everywhere, but uh, the use of poetry in the work, the, the, the choice of the, of the poem and the, yeah, and the rhythm uh, it gives also to the images uh, together. Um, I, I use a lot of repetition in my work. Um, I found that I wanted to mimic um, songs. Um, I used a lot of the sound bites that I would gather. I would just sit with them for hours and gather a bunch of sound bites, sometimes not rolling on camera. But I was purposely finding um, inspirational messages or messages um, that would really uh, empower people. That was that was my goal. So I would take little bites that I found inspiring and put it in rhythm with certain beats. So I would I would make it like the voice is a note. You know, the speaking voice is a note. So that's how I kind of um, approach my poetry <laughs> in the work. I really, really love that and the way it works and in terms of the way it opens things towards um, especially of self-liberation, you know, but, um, but I feel like, you know, cinema itself is poetry. I, I think not because we're using a poem, but just even cinematic language is poetry. And to me, um, it, it's almost like the, the poem, for example, that I, that I have here, um, it, I, I see it a little bit as a volume and, and, and not as an, um, but it's as if it, it, it's, it's what opens different windows. It's what shines different lights. It's, it's you know, it's poetry and emotion. And, and to me, um, um, sustaining a certain um, um, attention within the whole work that can immerse you into in, into that poem and 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 the meaning of it, and just kind of add a, a, a whole other dimension into into what you're seeing, into the image. I I, I feel like um, it, that's that's how I was thinking. You know, just a way of opening also um, uh, many many doors because. Um, um, you know, this film was going to be, I mean, I don't have him, you know, speaking visually. I just have him in his, um, you know, natural environment, in his space. And so, and to me, you know, that, that relationship between the shadows, you know, just that, that light, the shadows, 
the, the sound, the sound design, all of it to me is part of that um, world creation in a sense, the poetry that, that um, I don't know, that, that's how I, I felt like I was using this poem with this short. As, as you said, poetry like key words to open gates, key sound, key images to open new worlds. That's why I love create like microcosm thing, circular thing, mm -hmm. and you can answer it really. Don't be afraid to go within yourself to be able to connect with you and others. Mm -hmm. And yeah, for me, poetry is really like key words, like open gate and visual sound poetry the same. Yeah, yeah, possibilities yeah. <laughs> and, po and possibilities. I, re I, yeah, yeah. I really feel like in these films, you know, that uh, in your films that I saw, um, it, there is that search for the, uh, the cinematic language, you know, in which in which to to es express, because um, uh, again, um, I, that's what uh, fascinates me to me to be able to search for that language and to find other ways of expression and to, to, to really even make up, you know, other things to, um, you know, to find new ways to, to express because, again, I feel like that is also part of that liberation, you know, self-affirmation that we are actually talking about. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, maybe now it's time for questions from uh, the audience. Um, so if you have questions, we're here. Translation is, is always something very uh, particular. Um, the Maye, um, oh. the Maye is, is, a, is a construction with two, 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 two syllables, uh, de and Maye. Maye means, um, uh, it means two things. It means uh, married, like someone's getting married. But it means also entangled, something which is, you know, like uh, complicated to, you know, with uh, yeah, we, yeah, very, very, very difficult to, uh, to, uh, yeah, something which need to be to to get li liberation or of or, or, or to get free. So uh, the idea was to to say let's set free, you know, let's uh, uh, let's set free while uh, getting uh, into a kind of a union with. With, I mean, the film is, is, is obviously about me at the beginning, but it's also more like about, uh, you know, uh, uh, people. We don't have really gender in Creole, so that's always very, very interesting too. But yeah, it was that. Let's, uh, let's set free and uh, let's get rid of all the paradigmas that uh, don't belong to us, uh, especially about intimacy, which should be something very personal. So, yeah. What led you to shoot with black and white? Um, I think because I really love digging, d diving to archives, but in Martinique, do it that do that is really some it's violence. You you you, you can um, you can see some archives or it's not their point of view, it's not their gaze, it's not their perception, it's not their story. And I just wanted to create like a kind of new personal intimate, intimate archive and how, yeah, that, that, that was a little idea I got. And yeah, that's it. I, I really wanted to like kind of recreate an archive for the poem of, of Simon. Well, for myself, I mean, this was the um, uh, Claire Laura um, proposition when uh, when uh, when we shoot the, the, the film and when I when we edited it. 
And um, actually, I was also like, oh yeah, I like it. You know, I, I didn't know she would, she would, uh, she, she had uh, uh, made the shooting in, in, in White and Black. And I was like, I really like it. And also, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really working a lot about uh, anti-images. I don't know, you know, like uh, Martinique, uh, it's always like, you know, so colorful, you know, vivid greens and colors. And I was like, okay. And we were in that garden, so luscious and, uh, you know, and, and uh, I was like, it, it looks like in, in black and white, it, it gives more, more, more light to everything, which is very strange because you, 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 you could wish to have all the colors and it would seem so tropical and exotic, but um, without the colors, everything was more uh, lively. I, I don't know, for me it was, it was important and, it, and now it's a part of the process also when I think uh, it's gonna be very difficult to go back to colors. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I agree with you. Uh, you know, for me, um, I, I felt that even though um, we are looking at uh, Abba Yusuf and, and having this nightly ritual, to me, uh, the story was more of an interior story, and and I and I felt that uh, you know the color, especially the colors of the hyenas, was just so beautiful. It was like National Geographic, and I didn't want that uh, quality to, to to this film. I wanted to. Uh, I felt that it was just incredibly distracting, um, and and I wanted to kill that literally to bring something that is just say it's as vivid if not more because then um, even the way that I was shooting I was very intently focusing on those shadows on that uh, you know stark uh, break between the light and the dark and um, and because to me the story was there I'm thinking fear and love I'm fearing I'm thinking light and, and, and you know and, and shadows and whatever um, meaning but to, to me it has an incredibly profound meaning whether it translates um, I don't know but when I was uh, shooting it that's how I was thinking so and I felt that um, uh, it essentializes the whole thing into centralizes it, it focuses it and um, yeah to me that's that's how I was thinking about you know the black and white but you know, I wanted, I have a question for, for you guys too, because I wanted to ask you about the process. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I guess, we will need we'll to speak about, about that later, yes. uh, drinking something <laughs> together. Uh, I think it's time for the last movie of the last film of uh, that uh, great conference, and I'll let you introduce maybe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.